What's up, guys? So Spectral is a movie that I caught on Netflix the other day, and because the snowpocalypse of 2016 happened where I live, I decided to watch it. And I'll just throw it right out there. Not bad. Don't get me wrong, there are some dog shit B-movies on Netflix and stuff that should never have been made. But at the same time, Netflix is a platform to get shit like this made, which is nice because the whole film industry has shifted like crazy in the last five to ten years. But after watching it, Netflix was like a totally obvious choice because it's an original script, it's not a franchise, and it was directed by a guy you've never heard of because I think he all he did was commercials originally, and everybody in the movie is like you've seen their face but you have no idea what their name is. I think the only like fairly known star in the movie is Emily Mortimer, and I only know Know her because the newsroom is like one of the greatest shows ever made. But anyway, onto the story. So essentially, the plot of the movie are that all these people, military, scientists, and CIA, trying to figure out exactly what these ghostly figures are. So it's like a fun mystery sci-fi with a little bit of horror tagged in there. It starts off with a soldier. He's all by himself. He's still in contact with home base, and he has these goggles that I wouldn't describe as night vision, but they help you see things that the naked eye cannot see. And then he comes across something that looks like a ghost or a specter, hence the name spectral. Some shit happens in that scene. And and away we go. And then all the main characters get introduced. They bring in the scientist who created the technology for the special vision goggles. And then Emily Mortimer's character is with the CIA. And then they have a military officer. And there's a really good scene about the three of them trying to figure out exactly what this thing that was on the recording is. Which leads me to my next point is the fact that I really identified with the main scientist character because he takes this kind of objective analytical viewpoint. And if you couldn't tell, I like Sherlock Holmes. So characters like that that have this kind of like visceral understanding of all things around them really, really, really makes me like the movie more. Because everybody's got their theories and the scientist is like, okay, we don't have enough data. And he basically points out how everybody that's looking for an answer is biased in some way. Like the tech support guy is looking for a glitch because that's what he's paid to look for. And the CIA agent is paid to find the enemy, so they're thinking it has to be the enemy. And that's a great analysis of like how people function. Because a lot of people just need validation as soon as possible. Like it's just human nature. And they also like to feel like their job is important, so they find the thing that's closest to them. Meanwhile, over here in reality world, if you only have half the facts, and those facts may or may not be wrong, you're not going to make the best decision possible. So I really liked that guy's dialogue exchange in that little scene. And the movie's structured very well, too. Like, it's got a typical three-act structure, and each structure has, like, X amount of beats in it, so there's always something happening. So the movie was constantly, like, riveting, and it had my attention the whole time. After the first half hour of the movie, it felt like I just watched, like, an hour and a half, and I'm just like, holy shit. Like, the movie's very dense, and I thought that was cool. However, the dense density of the movie kind of led to a couple negative things, but I'll talk about that later. Another thing I liked was the CGI. Now, I've never worked at a CGI company. I'm not like a guru when it comes to that kind of thing. But when something looks as real as humanly possible, that's how I judge whether or not the CGI is well done. Now, part of the issue with that is that nobody's ever seen things that look quite like the things that you see in the movie before. So there's no real way to tell how realistic it could or could not look. But to me, it looked aesthetically pleasing to the rest of the movie. So I was like, that looks fucking sweet. All the action scenes were really cool. They were a little bit predictable though. Like the director did a good job of building the tension and the suspense, but you kind of knew where that suspense was going, if that makes any sense. And just overall, I liked how everything about the specters was revealed throughout the movie, like how they get more and more evidence. Like the more you figure out, the more interesting the story becomes. And the music was pretty decent. Not like super special, but it was good. However, as much as I enjoyed the movie, there are some negatives. First thing, they don't say exactly when the movie takes place, and it felt like at the beginning of the movie, it was maybe like two years in the future by the end of the movie, it felt like technology had progressed like 40 years, which I thought was like really, really off. And that was kind of like, when the fuck does this movie take place? I have no idea. And I kind of already said how some of the action was a little bit predictable. Like you kind you knew what the fuck was going to happen half the time. So short version, plot, not predictable. Action scenes, very predictable. Also, there's a couple of characters that get killed off in the movie that you don't really care about that much. Like the movie does try to like build you up a little bit with some of the characters that are, that, you know, get off later on. But I was just kind of like, Eh. And on to what I said before about how, like, the script feels kind of dense at times. Which I don't have a problem with at all, because Aaron Sorkin does that a lot. And that kind of, like, snappy, fast-paced dialogue is good, but it felt disjointed at times. And there was a lot of, like, stating the obvious. Because there's a few times where it's like, you can see what's happening to, like, somebody or something on the screen. And then somebody will pop up out of nowhere and say, oh, look at that. Insert obvious comment here. Like, the opening introduction when it's, like, bringing all the characters to you, that 
that kind of expositional dialogue is totally fine because you don't know anything yet. Like my question was like, why do you have to like say dialogue on top of the already visual representation that I'm like looking directly at? Like you don't need to supplement that when it's like blatantly obvious, you know? But luckily that only happens like three or four times throughout the entire movie. So it wasn't that big of a deal, but it was kind of annoying. But all other things being equal, I really enjoyed the movie. Like I'm really glad that I got to see this. So for rating, I'm thinking this movie gets a good 8.3. Is it a great movie? No, not particularly, but is there a lot of good shit in it? Yes, of course there is. For being a fun little sci-fi movie that I basically got to watch for free, like, yeah, I would totally recommend this for everybody. But enough of my thoughts, what are your thoughts? If you saw the movie, drop me a comment, let me know what's up. And if you like this review, drop me a like, subscribe, do all that other shit, and I will catch you guys later.